to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Joining us live in studio this morning is Head of School of Education, John Fischetti. Hello and welcome, John. Thanks, Meryl. Good morning. I was in a schoolroom last week, my daughter's Year 6 class. All the children arrived in, into the classroom. On the smart board, there were pictures of them. And each child, in quite an orderly manner, went up and tapped their picture. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? It was roll call. Yeah. There was no more present or here, miss. They each went up and it was their responsibility to tap their picture. The pictures that remained on the board, the teacher then did a quick double check. Is this person away? Yes, not here. Okay, they're absent. Schools are changing, John, aren't they? Yeah, this is a really exciting time and your example is perfect for a whole revolution in why we even need to get kids up in the morning to go to a place called school. Well, how has the purpose changed? But where, because a lot of criticism is sometimes levelled. Uh, people say, oh, everything has to be done at schools these days. Why, why aren't the family more responsible? But talk to me about that evolving purpose of school. So if you look at it, most of us and most of your listeners were 20th century educated. And in those days, the metaphor for schooling is where children went to watch their teachers work. Uh -huh. you know, we sat passively, teachers talked, we took notes, we engaged slightly, and we took examinations and we had a good life. The well, some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> the tricky part of the world today is we can do most of the content delivery either m mobile devices or at home on our computers, where the experts in the world in every content area can teach us more profoundly than any one individual teacher can, if the purpose of schools is to listen passively and take notes and to regurgitate that for examination. If school is a place that young people go to be inspired, to work together to solve problems and create knowledge, to use contents to actually apply in real world situations, now we've got an interesting place to be. Mm, I've got goosebumps just hearing you say that because the world needs those bright minds, those children, and doing jobs that we've never even dreamed up yet. Right, and most of what your daughter and her generation will do, we may not even know the technical term for that job. One of the disadvantages of the transition from our generation to your daughter's is that anything that can be automated will be, or already has. And so jobs that just provide a specific skill are obsolete before we know it. So the general skills of broad mind and thinking and the technical skills to be able to understand the world in which we in in this emerging technology world are both required. But more importantly is the collaborative skills to work together to solve problems because that's really the secret to the companies and the industries that are actually thriving today versus those that are going under. We see that in places like Google, don't we? They have incredible offices where people kind of mooch about and problem solve and there's no one has a desk and there's no sort of set role. You, you just get in and do what needs to be done. And lots of innovation in the Hunter Today schools is around that notion of problem-based or project-based learning. PBL, I'm not sure if it's in your daughter's school, but where teachers working together are creating and designing in instructional projects using the curriculum and the, and the uh, Australian desired to outcomes for kids to say, okay, you guys work together on solving this. Here's the resources. Here's the ideas. You go figure this out and come back. And then teachers build in some of the content along the way to help them learn what they need to to master it. So this problem-based approach actually mirrors what happens at Google, but it also happens at the auto fix-it shop. It also happens every day in what people do trying to get the trains on time. It happens to do what hap right here at the radio station. People solving problems to help make the world a better place. And how do we train teachers for this? Because this is a massive paradigm shift for anyone who thinks I'll be a teacher and stand up the front and boss children about or, you know, be, be that authoritarian figure. That's changed, hasn't it? Yes, and it's a real challenge for our current experienced teachers to go from a transition to be a content deliverer to this facilitator of, of inquiry and, and experimentation and knowledge to, uh, and a new teachers have to be prepared. So we need a different kind of teacher for a different kind of school. And that's where our school and working with our Faculty of Education and Arts and our university's real mission to really provide the best for this region is on a path to really reshape teacher education as we've known it. So the teachers coming out of the University of Newcastle will be prepared to be those content deliverers, the problem solvers, the ones that are in really inspiring kids to think outside of the square, if I can use the old cliche. Currently as the biggest school, in the country, as well as the largest provider of diverse students, indigenous teachers in this region and in most of the country, we are already 
doing a really good job of preparing teachers using the regulatory approach, the tick the box approach. But where we need now is to go the direction you're speaking. And that's part of the projects we're working on at our school these days. Can we talk some more about actual examples next time we get sure. together? Absolutely. That would be wonderful because I think people will just be gobsmacked by things that are going on in yep. education. John Fischetti, Head of Education and School of Education here at the University of Newcastle. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, that's a, bit of an old, that's a bit of an old school cliche too, isn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, thank you, friend. Oh, there we are.